Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kendra and I am a full-time reseller on platforms like Poshmark and eBay. Clearly from the title, you can kind of get a gist of what today is going to be about, but before you think too much into it, I really want to talk about my experience a little bit and why this is kind of my decision. Um, I'm not looking to change anybody's mind or make anybody quit the platform and or any other platform but this is kind of a personal experience I've been a full-time Poshmark reseller for the past two and a half years and I kind of want to share some stats with you a little bit and why I plan on getting out of the business for the, a little bit um, it's not fully leaving the full-time Poshmark gig uh, but like I said I will go into that but first we're gonna go do a quick thrift haul and I'll show you what I got and then I'll give you some story time so I have been so picky, so extremely picky about everything that I've been getting lately. I have so much stuff I have to go through, but I just had the itch to go thrifting. So I'm going to start in the skirts, even though skirts do not do well for me at all. And the first skirt that we're going to come across is this nice Lily Pulitzer. The price was there. It was super cute, but there were too many snags and I did pass on it. Um, this next skirt that we're going to come up on, I believe I did get this one. I passed it, but I did get it. Activewear has been so hot for me right now. Anything activewear sells really well. I still have a program or, you know, a list of stuff that I really like to look out for. I don't like to just grab anything anymore, but I used to be big into grabbing all the Nike, all the Under Armour, all the Excursion, and those kind of just sit forever or I end up getting rid of them for like $5. So... Um, I don't think I found anything today in the activewear section. There were a couple of pieces I was interested in for myself, and this was a new to me brand. It's called Shape. I looked it up and I didn't find any comps, but the material seemed awesome, but I did pass on it. Uh, Nike, Adidas, and Reebok are super oversaturated in the market for me, so I do usually pass on those depending on the piece. I did almost pick up a Nike golf skirt earlier. It was super bright yellow. It was really cute, but it just had, it had a really big stain on it. And then, so I ended up putting it back, but definitely check your activewear guys. I don't know what it is with activewear right now. I feel like everybody got over the COVID session. And so everybody's donating back their clothes because now they have to get actual professional clothes to back to, the, to go back to the office. So these were a nice pair of Athleta, but they were just really worn to me. Um, and they had some staining on them and just, I... Not really big into cleaning and my steam cleaner only does so much, so I did pass on those. Um, this store always has lots of new tag boutique items, but again with boutique items, usually it's unrecognized by Poshmark and it takes a lot of effort to try and sell them. Sometimes a Facebook Marketplace will recognize them, but like I said, I just have so much stuff right now at home that I have to go through from all the free stuff that we've been getting from the side of the road. I got to relist a bunch of items. I've had a lot of um, people give me stuff le recently. I probably have over 200 items sitting around and I hate death piles. So I was really picky today. Uh, I probably would have grabbed a few more items than what I pass on, but I really passed a lot of stuff. These are just some cute blouses um, and we're going to get ready to go to the next store.
So I did go to two thrift stores today. The first thrift store was a real quick uh, thrift. I had to babysit this morning, so I only had about a half hour to go to the thrift store. But I'm gonna show you what I got. So the first item I got, white tags were half off here. So uh, I paid about $3.50 each per item. So this first item is Nick and Zoe. Um, and I do love picking up this brand. It looks like uh, this was new with tags at one point in time, or it still is because it still has the button on it. It's still attached and then it does have the original like plastic thing on it. I just didn't see the tag anywhere. It's just a pretty like abstract pencil skirt. This is a size six. He said I paid about $3.50 for this piece and I did look up comps. I did find one sold on Poshmark for about $35 new and then I saw one that also sold on eBay. Same print, different color and that one sold for $45. So definitely nick and zoe is a go-to for me i really like this brand uh and it really sells quickly for me this item was this item was actually 250. um it's a size 10 and it's this nanette lapore and it's this really cute turquoise snake print like knee length skirt it's got the button in the back and i just thought this was a really pretty color i don't know if animal print is still in poshmark these were mixed comps so i saw some sold for five to ten dollars um and they were further down on the list and when I first searched this uh kind of towards the top of the list I saw a size six sold for thirty five dollars and a size ten sold for forty five dollars new tags now this is not new tags but um it is in really great condition and I think it's a great color for anybody it is summer so I think it'll sell quickly and I might average uh price it out in like the twenty five to thirty five dollar range the next item that we got was this, is it a skirt or is it shorts? It's shorts. It's um these Puma shorts. And the main reason I got these is because half off these were only $1.75. They do have, I'll show you the logo. Um, what size are you? I believe these are a size six. And they do have the little Puma logo down here. They're, there's no stains. They're a great size. Again, it's summer. Everybody's, um, they look like they could be either golf or tennis shorts. So I'll probably start these off at 25. This next item I got. So I've been kind of exploring more the Facebook marketplace side of sales. And this brand is a local brand in the area that I live in. Poshmark doesn't recognize the brand. And I have sold this item a couple times on eBay so far. And it does seem to do pretty well. It's new with tags though. And the brand is Ivy. Like I said, it's a small boutique here. I do believe they have an online store. And they have some great, just really cute stuff. Um, I did pay full price on this one. This one I paid like six fifty for. I think... This is the front and I don't know if these I think this goes in the back like that and then it's super strappy in the back and it's a dress I'm gonna say it's a really short dress um what size are you it's a size medium um the tag on here the cute little tag here it says it was priced at $39 I can sell Ivy locally on my Facebook marketplace new with tags I haven't been lucky enough to find one and in this good of condition so I'll probably list this one on Facebook Marketplace for $25. And then this last item that we got from there, this one is new with tags and it was half off. So we only paid $3.25. This is another Nick and Zoe and it's also a size four. And it is just a really cute pencil skirt. It's like a color block. Um, I think it's got a great material on it. The tag is still on there, which is always a perk. And it says it was originally $128. And the style name on this is Wild Cherry. So Wild Cherry Pencil Skirt, super cute. Um, I'll probably list this one new starting at $45.
All right, that was from the first store. So really exciting things about the second store. Here's why. So for the summer, I decided that I was gonna get a part-time job just to earn some extra income for the summer. Any vacations that we wanna go in and just be extra income, I don't have to pull out of my business to go on vacation. I started working at a resale store, which is like every reseller's dream, I think. I mean, every reseller's dream, in my opinion, is to eventually just be self-sufficient and be able to work from home and not have to work under a boss. But I get to work in a resale shop with a 50% off employee discount. <laughs> it is crazy and I love it. The downside to this job is that they do have their own Poshmark and eBay store. Everything goes to a really great cause. I am still finding items there for a reseller, but I know that I'll never be able to purchase unless I buy new from them via Poshmark or eBay. They have like fry boots. I've seen Louis Vuitton come there. The amount of stuff that comes into this resale shop is crazy that people donate and help out the community. It's a great organization. But again, I get to go shopping there. I only work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I get a 50% off discount. So I went there today to utilize that 50% discount. For those of you who are curious, when I would do my dollar day hauls, this is the place that I would get my dollars, my dollar, uh, sale stuff. Sorry. So I no longer get that dollar deal. I just get the half off price, um, which is totally fine because it's off every color. It's not just one color for me because I'm an employee. So the first item that we got, these are men's New Balance shoes. These are in great condition. Uh, they still have a lot of the tread and the inside look good. These were originally $8, but because I get half off at the store, um, now that I work there, uh, these were only $4. Again, New Balance shoes. I think these were a larger size. They're size 14. So that's a great size. Like I said, just New Balance. I want to say it's a sneaker, but it kind of reminds me of like a hiking shoe, like a good hiking shoe. Um, and there don't really seem to be any big flaws other than some like minor pilling or wear on like the New Balance. Maybe that's just how they are. But these are the Absorb uh, sneakers. So paid $4 for these. I will probably list these for... $35 to start on eBay. This next item, I'm pretty excited about this item. Uh, had I not been an employee, I would have still gotten this for a dollar. But this brand is Can Can. And I love picking up this brand. I don't think this was on my top bolo list for Poshmark recently, but I do love picking up this brand. These are a smaller size. I believe it's a junior size 7. But they're just these black high-rise skinny jeans. They're in great condition. I did notice the pocket back here is like the flap is like bent over and weird. But otherwise, they're just a classic black pair of high-rise skinny jeans. I will probably list these for like $35 to start. I really debated on these shoes. So I remember seeing them last week. And I passed on them. I just thought they were a little bit too expensive for my price range. I got them half off though. They're size eight and a half, and they are these Cole Haan uh, Decon like gray camo calves hair loafers, and they seem to be in really great condition. The bottom sole is like leather. It is real calves hair, and it's like this. Like I said, it's like this gray like camo. They're in really good condition. They're a size eight and a half. I thought they were adorable. I'll probably start these off at thirty five. This next item is just a classic bread and butter piece for me, but it is Lucky Brand. These are a staple for me. Here we go. There we go. I feel like Lucky Brand jeans do really well. Here's that brand again, just in case. I, don't, I haven't found any of their shorts yet, but I only paid a couple dollars for these. They're like a Bermuda, a Bermuda and they're a size six. They're just like a classic, like four button style jean short. I'll probably start these off at 20. This was a new to me brand. I did look up some comps. I didn't find anything on Poshmark, but I did find a few things on eBay. And they are called Cloud Veil. And a lot of the Cloud Veil stuff that I found were like snow pants. These are a size 14, so they're a great size. If they're snow pants, they're definitely super lightweight. Like I would definitely wear regular pants under these. There's no, nothing thermal about them, but they do have that like wind and water resistant material feel about them. Lots of pockets. It's got, it's got the belt in the front. So I am thinking this is something to do with snow pants, 
but eBay cams that I were finding any they were selling anywhere from $17 to $45 so I know it's a big range but I figure at $4 it's a good gamble I'll probably start these off it is summer too so that's also a gamble they may not sell till fall or winter but I feel like it's a good gamble for $4 and I'll probably list these at $35 so I haven't figured out if I'm going to use this first for myself or if I'm just going to put it on there. I don't remember what this print is called. It's like country themed or something. And this is a giant tablecloth. It's a 56 inch by 92 inch tablecloth. I got this for $7 and similar prints like the, they, I was seeing a lot of like vanities and just like curtains and those were selling upwards of $65 so this looks like it's in great condition I haven't fully looked it over underneath the light but there doesn't really appear to be too many stains on here I might start this out at 45 and see how well it does I've been really trying to get into households and learning a little bit more finding a little more doing a little more research on household so instead of just clothes I can expand outward to do do more like electronics and video games, household items. I hate shipping dishware, but I will ship dishware. But I think it's good to know about different linens and popular things like that that are going on. So I got that as a gamble, but it looks pretty promising. This next item is Classic American Eagle. This was my number one find on my uh, my Poshmark Bolo list uh, for stuff to sell. They sell really quickly. I've never found a pair of jeans like this one, but I only paid $1.50 for these. They're just a classic pair of like American Eagle tie-dye shorts. Um, what size are you? They're size four, so they're a smaller size. I'll still probably start these off at 15 or 20. These were pretty exciting. Uh, this is the North Face. And these are a women's pair of like uh, cargo capris. They're really good, like hiking or camping material, um, lots of pockets. Like I said, they're a size six. That's got the little like emblem there in the pocket. I didn't look up comps on these, but I'm assuming because of the amount of North Face that I have sold, I'll probably start these off at $45. And then this brand I've gotten a handful of times, mostly tops and they really didn't bring in a whole lot of income, but I've heard really good things about them. So this is 89th and Madison. And I just feel like these are a classic pair of like women's, I think they're boot cut, right? They might be a straight leg, but like they're just a classic pair of like women's boot cut. They might be straight leg, um, white pants. There's no stains on them from what I can tell. They have a super stretchy waist on them. So that's good. They're size 16. If they were a size 14, I'd probably keep these, but they're not. Um, and they don't appear, I did the, the see-through test on them and it seems pretty good. Like they seem pretty solid. So let's just stretch in these. Like I said, I haven't looked up comps yet on these. From what I've seen, other people's dresses and other people's pants seem to sell over $40. So I might try these at 35 or 40 and see how well they do. Oh, I love this jacket. <laughs> this is a great jacket. I love the style. I am definitely too big for it. If I dropped 35 pounds, I might be able to fit into it. I love this style. I love this print. The brand I don't come across very much, but I do hear good things. And I'm probably going to slaughter the name, even though it basically sounds itself out. This is Mondetta. And... Even with my half off, this was still $7.50, which is a little higher than like what I like to pay, but it's this classic like running joggers, um, heathered, is that like a heathered print you'd say? Like moto zip runner jacket. It's super lightweight. It's got the thumb holes and it's got the color block like underneath. And I just think it's adorable. It's like the asymmetric Mo uh, moto zip that everybody's into it's got the nice chest pocket for like your phone plus it has these aren't uh zip closure but they're just regular pockets still super nice and i think this one has an inside pocket too yeah they have the inner pockets too they don't zip but they do have the 
inside pockets on the inside here so they're not very big but they're there I haven't looked up comps for this either really I guess I kind of looked at comps I I did like a quick search I didn't get into the specifics and filter down to jackets and coats I just looked up Mondetta and then I scrolled through what had previously sold and a lot of stuff was selling for over $35 so that seemed promising to me so I figured I'd give this one a try again I love this color it does have a zip on the back of it like there should be a hood with it but it didn't come with the hood so that's a little disappointing but still gonna probably start off in that 35 to 40 dollar range this also was a very exciting find uh i don't find this very often in my area but when i do i usually pick it up i recently passed on a pair of shorts and i was so disappointed that i went back the next day the town was about 35 minutes away and i went back just for those and they were gone so somebody else knew what they were and this is the the brand is a little worn off here but the brand is cool and you can kind of see the little symbol that's what i look for and this is a nice like after wear like light uh runner's jacket maybe it does have the thumb holes in it too but i just noticed this on the back holding it up i think this kind of looks like like this is like a heathered material i think is what it's called and I think that looks like bleaching right there. It's on the back. And then I just noticed here it is on the collar again. It looks like there's bleaching somewhere in this. So otherwise it's in pretty good condition. There's side pockets. It's a full zip. Super cute. Even with the bleach stains, I might try and sell this for 20 bucks. So we'll see. I bought these for personal use. This was the first year. So Steve decided this year he wanted to tap our maple trees. They're soft maples. But I guess they still are, but they heard me was, I don't know what they are. Anyways, we, we don't have any experience in tapping trees and he decided that he was going to YouTube it, watch it. And he totally did it. And he got like, we got like 40 gallons of maple syrup in like a two week time period. And then you have to boil it down and we probably got about a gallon's worth. But I just thought these were the cutest jars to put our maple syrup in. We have them in like regular mason jars right now, um, but when we go to gift them to people or we go to pour pour them or refill them for our families I just think that these are the cutest jars they're like the perfect I don't know it might be a pint it's a really skinny jar so these were a dollar each and I got two of them so I figured that'd be it'd be a nice thing for maple syrup and then I got three of these mugs they don't appear to be anything special they say Pat's Critters Montgomery Alabama and they have like that label on the bottom I know the price tags in the way I haven't taken off yet and there were only like two different ones but like this one's fun this one says I'm proud to be an orthodontist something else like they tried to spell orthodontist like five times or three times and they couldn't and then they just crossed everything out and said smile saver so I thought these were cute. I mean, they could be a fun gift thing. I don't know who, I don't know anybody in my family that's an orthodontist. So, um, and then this one says whatever that says on the side there. So I got these. I just thought they would be fun. Um, maybe to sell as a set. I'm not big on selling. I've told you guys this. I'm not really big on sending out dishware, but this is easier to send out than a 16 piece dish set. So I did get these three just to try them out. I, like I said, I didn't really do a good job of looking them up. Uh, so I don't even know what comps say about them. All right, diving into the nitty gritty. I know you guys have been waiting for this. So thanks for being patient. So Poshmark, I have been doing Poshmark for about two and a half years since, since January of 2019. And I've been full time on it for the last about year and a half or so. I very much dislike how much I have to be active on Poshmark for Poshmark to work in my favor. I know that I don't always have the nicest brands that people are looking for and that's fine, but I still feel like I should be getting more sales than what I have been. Don't get me wrong. I've had some great sale days, but I'm not getting like, I used to get a thousand dollars a week and that hasn't been happening lately. It seems like it hasn't been happening for a lot of people. It's not just me. So like I said, I'm not trying to convince you out of Poshmark there. It was a great site for me to start on as far as uh, a start out reseller. I started out by selling stuff from my closet and I've made it into a business now, but they're just not bringing in the funds that I want to. Another thing that affects us maybe is summer slowdown. We know that everybody's on vacation right now. And so just not as many people are ordering. That's a thing as well. Here's what bothers me about Poshmark though. You have to be very active 
on the platform every day for the algorithm to work in your favor. And to me, that's really stressful. That makes it hard for me to put my phone down and have fun with my family and walk away from my phone. Especially when I take a vacation and I have to put my phone on vacation mode for a week. When I come back, I don't get sales for weeks because for an entire week, I didn't share. I didn't list anything. I was having fun and that's what vacation mode is for. And by the time I come back, it is. it takes me sometimes weeks to recover and get that algorithm to work for me all over again. Everything that I worked hard for just because I took a week's vacation and that hurts me a lot. Here's the other thing, and this might blow your socks off, it might be normal for you. For me, it makes the difference. So, I have been doing Poshmark, like I said, since January of 2019. Some part-time, some full-time, about halfway. And I've only made an accumulative amount of about $12,000 in the past two and a half years. That's not a lot. I didn't start eBay until September of last year. I think I've been a member on there for a while, but I didn't actually start selling anything till September of 2020. It is now almost June of 2020. I have made about $15,000 on eBay in nine months. And it took me two and a half years to get to $12,000 on Poshmark. So, I mean, you do the math on that. I think I have like a thousand items on Poshmark and I only have like four or 500 on eBay. And so half those items that are on Poshmark are my older items and I just haven't had a chance to transition them over to eBay yet. But I do see eBay sales working out much better for me than Poshmark. Also, last week I kind of took a break from everything and I didn't, I kind of looked at Poshmark and I sent out some offers to Likers and I did the make a deal days. Uh, but I didn't list anything on Poshmark or eBay. My mom shares my closet for me. Uh, like two times a day. So that was the only activity really going on on Poshmark. In that week of not doing anything and no activity on my part, I made zero sales on Poshmark, but I made 22 sales on eBay and some of those were over $50. So the difference of not doing anything and getting zero sales and not doing anything and getting sales still, that's, that's a high rise point for me. That's just another reason for me to take my time and uh, leave while I'm still going good. So there are other reasons and I've looked at the stats and I'm kind of going to share some of the stats with you. So I did a recent Google search and I know Google isn't always accurate and we shouldn't always believe what Google says, but Google pulled up some studies from Poshmark and eBay and in, there were like 6.2 million buyers on Poshmark. That's fine. But there's also, they estimated about 1.2 million accounts that are inactive users. So there's that. eBay had 183 million buyers. That's the amount of active buyers that are on eBay versus Poshmark at 6.9. I mean, you do the math on that. I want to get more eyes on my stuff and I want to do it with less time on the app. So now I have to put more work into an app that has way less active users than another account where I have to do less work. Also put this into play as well. Facebook, everybody, almost everybody I know has a Facebook account. And when I Google it last, there are 2.6 billion people that have Facebook. Now, I don't know how Facebook Marketplace works with like the global shipping program like uh, eBay has. I've only sold within the US, so I don't know how that goes as far as people seeing my stuff. But 2.6 billion people. Back into my Poshmark thing. I probably put in about 40 hours a week between YouTube, Poshmark, and eBay. And when I was just doing Poshmark before, I could get about 30 to 40 active listings up daily. That's just taking pictures. You guys know that I take uh, photos of my measurements so people can see those. But then when I started eBay and I had to cross list those, by the way, I have tried list perfectly and it just didn't work well for me. I do feel like when I started eBay and now I'm cross listing between Poshmark and eBay, I can only get about 10 to 15 listings up per day. So that really cut back for me on both stores, maybe doing harm a little bit to both. So again, this is just for me, you know, this is, I'm, I'm not ranting. I'm kind of voicing my opinion out there, giving you guys some reasoning behind why I'm deciding to leave. This might just be a summer thing for me, 
Uh, maybe it'll pick back up in the winter. I haven't decided. So I haven't done just eBay without Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace. So this summer while I have my part-time job, I'm going to take advantage of just doing eBay to see how well those sales soar. I feel like if I could really put focus into one store instead of two or three, that maybe I will just soar in one store than I would three different platforms. So the decision is yours. I'm just giving you guys some facts, some of my own research that I've done. Like I said, everybody that I know that sells on Poshmark knows how time consuming it is. That's why there are like uh, reseller assistants who will share your uh, Poshmark closet for you to keep it active. But again, last week when I took that weekly break, my mom shared my closet. She shares it twice a day for me, like Monday through Saturday. And I really appreciate that because I don't have to pay somebody to do it. But even with her doing that and me listing nothing, I still didn't make any sales. It's the worst feeling. While eBay is soaring and I made 22 sales. So again, this is just my personal reflection on Poshmark over the past two and a half years. They, like I said, they were my first and they may be my last. I will keep you guys updated for sure. I mean, this is a big step for me. Like I've had Poshmark in my life for two and a half years. Poshmark was the reason that I decided that I wanted to stay home full time. My sales sometimes are really good and sometimes they're really bad. To make my life a little bit easier, I am having a big, uh, basically name your price sale in Poshmark right now for my closet because there are so many items in there that aren't in my eBay store that the more items I sell for my Poshmark closet, the less that I'll have to transfer to eBay and the more I can just go out and buy more, buy new and reinvest back into eBay, my eBay store. So, so if you are interested in that, I will link my Poshmark closet in the description below. And the sale starts tomorrow, which is Friday. Hopefully I can upload this video Thursday night so you guys can see it. But I'm doing the sale from Friday to Monday. I'm hoping to blow up everything in my Poshmark store so I'll have fresh, um, profits to go and reinvest back into my eBay store. Thanks you guys for watching. Thanks for listening to me a little bit. It was a really big step for me to take this and I was really nervous about it, but it hasn't just been like an overnight decision, you guys. Like it really has taken me weeks to kind of grind down and I really put my heart into it the last two weeks other than last week and I got like no sales. It was awful. So kind of the last draw for me. I'm not going to delete my Poshmark account because I did work really hard to get 98,000 followers and I don't want to just like wipe that away from Poshmark. So I know that Poshmark is a little bit different for everybody. This is just how it has influenced me over the years. Like I said, no pressure. You guys can do what you want. This has just been my experience. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. It really helps me and my channel. And if you haven't yet already and you like video content rotated around mainly eBay now, uh, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys tomorrow.